Hello and welcome to this video. I am Karnesh Chauri and today we will look at IO multiplexing using the select and poll system calls and also using the ePoll API in Linux. The question is what is IO multiplexing and why do we need it? IO multiplexing is IO with many sources. It is a problem of magnitude. We are talking in context of network application that is server and clients and it is the server that has to communicate with many clients. A client does not have a problem because it has to talk with just one server. So as the scale of operations goes up, the number of clients that a server has to communicate with also increases. So this essentially is a problem of IO multiplexing, the problem of server being able to communicate with many clients. If we look a little deep into the communication problem, we find that talking is easy. It is listening that is difficult. When I say talking, I mean the right operation. It is relatively easy to write to a socket. You have the data, you make a write or send call and the work is done. Read from a socket is difficult because a read or receive call blocks and completes only when data is available. So if you do receive from a socket, you just block till data becomes available and the data become after an hour a day or a week. What happens to other sockets? Since we are blocked waiting for data on one socket, we can't do a read on other sockets. Obviously, this is not workable. There are two solutions. To a non-blocking receive on a socket, you wait for data till timeout, say 10 millisecond and then go to the next socket. But if there was no data, you end up wasting time. So we go to the second solution. Second solution is have one thread per client. This is good, but it does not scale. After a certain number of clients, the performance of the server will degrade. So we need something better still. And we have IO monitoring calls, select, poll and the ePoll API. To these calls, you can pass a set of file descriptors. The call returns when some of the file descriptors for sockets are ready for IO. So for a read or receive, you pass a set of file descriptors and when there is data, the call returns. You take the indicated file descriptors that are ready for IO and do the read or receive call. So with this, there is no need to block for an individual socket. You block on all sockets together and when the call returns, some of the sockets are ready for IO. Now we look at the select system call. Select operates on a set of file descriptors. It takes in three sets of file descriptors as arguments. The three sets are read FDs, a set of file descriptors we want to be monitored for read operation and write FDs, the set we want to be monitored for write operation and accept FDs, the set we want to be monitored for IO exceptions. Any of the pointers to the sets can be null and that set is ignored. There are macros to generate the file descriptor set, FD CLR clears FD from the set. FD is set tells whether FD is part of the set or not, FD set sets the FD in the file descriptor set and FD0 initializes the file descriptor set. The first parameter NFDs is the largest FD in the sets plus 1. The last parameter timeout is in seconds and microseconds. Select returns when one or more of file descriptors is ready for IO or the timeout has occurred. Now we have example server and client. Our server is a flight time server. It keeps track of arrival and departure times of flights at an airport. We'll use the same example for select, poll and ePoll API. There are clients that feed and query the flight times. The server starts and sets up a socket for listening for connections. And this is the loop. Before the start of loop, there is only one socket, the listener. We create an empty set of sockets, FDs and we add listener to it. We assign the file descriptor set FDs to the set read FDs and make the select call with read FDs. We are only interested in read FDs. The other two pointers write FDs and accept FDs are null. Our timeout is infinite. The last pointer is also null. FDmax is the highest file descriptor number. So the first parameter is FDmax plus one. When the select call returns, some of the sockets in read FD set are ready for input operation. The next step is to find out 
which file descriptors are ready for reading. For this, we need to look at readFT's file descriptor set. We scan readFT's file descriptor set for file descriptors 0 to FTMAX. We need to scan the file descriptor set one by one sequentially starting with file descriptor 0 and go on till FTMAX. If the file descriptor is listener, it means it is a request for new connection. The connection request is accepted and the new file descriptor is added to FDs, the set of all file descriptors. If the file descriptor is not listener, it means data is available for an existing connection and we go ahead and receive the data using the RECV call. If the number of bytes received in the RECV call is zero, it means that the relevant client is closing the connection. We close the file descriptor and remove it from FDs, the set of all file descriptors. If the number of bytes is greater than zero, we process the receive message and service the client. And this is done for all the ready file descriptors received in the read FDs set. To summarize, we select the server is able to communicate with clients on multiple sockets. However, the file descriptor set is not a very efficient data structure. Suppose there are only two file descriptors in a set returned by the select call and these are file descriptor numbers 5 and 223. The server program starts by checking the file descriptor set for descriptor 0, then 1, 2, etc. and then finds the file descriptor 5. Next, it goes on checking for file descriptors 6, 7, 8, etc. and after some time, it finds the file descriptor 223. So, it is not very efficient or intuitive. Also, select modifies the file descriptor sets. So, in the next iteration, the program has to reinitialize the file descriptor sets before making the select call. We'll move on to the next IO monitoring call, poll, and we'll see that poll does not suffer from these type of problems to a large extent. The poll call monitors file descriptors for events. The first parameter FDs is an array of structures, struct poll FD. This structure contains FD, the file descriptor of interest, and there are two short integers which are bit masks and represent events. The first short integer events is for requested events. The process wants to know if any of these events occur for the given file descriptor. The next short integer is R events. These are the events that actually happened on the file descriptor FD and are returned in this bit mask. The important events are poll in, which indicates input operations are possible on this FD, poll out, which means output operations on the file descriptor are possible. Then there is the event poll PRI, which indicates exception conditions on the file descriptor. And another event is poll RD hub, which means hang up in stream socket as the peer close connection. The GNU source feature test macro must be defined for using the poll RD hub event. Then there are error events. If any of these happen, they are returned in the R events bit mask. It does not matter whether they are initially passed in the events bit mask or not. These events are poll ERR for error conditions on the file descriptor, poll hub for hang up, and poll nval for invalid requests as the file descriptor was not open in the first place. The second parameter nfds specifies the number of elements in the array fds the first parameter. The last parameter timeout is in milliseconds. Poll returns when one or more file descriptors have events or timeout has occurred or a signal has interrupted poll. As an example of poll, let us modify the server program we presented earlier under select. We will replace the select call with poll and see how it works. And here is the server program with poll. We come to the relevant part of the program related to monitoring of socket file descriptors and the rest of the program is the same as before. Initially, NFDs is zero. We define a pointer to struct poll FDs for the array and max FDs, num FDs are all zeros. Next, we allocate space for five struct poll FDs. We do not know beforehand how many clients we will have. So we start with five clients and we can make this space bigger if more clients come. Next, the zeroth element of array of struct poll FDs is for listener. We are interested in the poll in event and num FDs becomes one. We come to the loop. We assign num FDs to n FDs and we make poll call 
and after some time pole returns. We examine all the elements of pole FD's array here in the for loop. FD is just a controlling variable for the for loop. It is not a file descriptor. The file descriptor is a part of a structure struct pole FD and we can access it via the pointer pole FD's plus FD dereference operator FD. In the loop, we examine all the elements of the array of struct pole FD. If file descriptor is listener, then it is request for a new connection. The request is accepted, which gives us a new socket for communication with the client. For this new socket, a struct pole FD is added to the array for monitoring by pole. If socket is not listener, it is an existing connection and we go ahead and receive data with the RECV call. If number of bytes received is zero, the client has closed the connection and we do likewise. We cannot really delete the structure for this file descriptor, so we make it negative so that it is ignored by pole in the next iteration onwards. If number of bytes received is greater than zero, it is a message from a client. We process the message and do the needful. So this is the server with pole. Pole versus select. Select uses sets of file descriptors which are inefficient and difficult to use. The problem with a file descriptor set is that one has to process it for all file descriptors 0 to fdmax sequentially one by one. So if you have got two file descriptors say 5 and 223 ready for IO, you need to process the file descriptor set with file descriptor 0, 1, dot dot 4, 5, 6, 7, dot dot 222, 223, 224, dot dot fdmax. This is tedious and inefficient. In the case of pole, we have an array of struct pole FT and we know the number of elements in the array. So we can simply process the array to know which file descriptors are ready for IO. Also in select, one passes file descriptors of interest in file descriptor sets and select overrides the file descriptor sets to indicate which file descriptors are ready for IO. So one has to initialize the file descriptor sets in each iteration before calling select. Pole has two distinct fields, events and R events, for requested and return events respectively. It does not modify the requested events field, so it is not necessary to reinitialize it every time before making the poll call. We can definitely say that poll call is better than the select call. Now we come to the ePoll API for monitoring multiple file descriptors. ePoll is specific to Linux. There are three basic calls, ePoll create, ePoll ctl and ePoll wait. ePoll create creates an ePoll instance. The parameter size is obsolete but must be greater than zero. ePoll create one is a newer call and it also creates a new ePoll instance. Both ePoll create and ePoll create one return the file descriptor for the newly created instance of ePoll. The parameter flex can be zero or ePoll CLO exec in which case close on exec flag is set on the new file descriptor. Once you have created an ePoll instance, you can add, modify or delete file descriptors to or from it. And you can specify the events that you wish to monitor for the file descriptors. You can do these control operations with the ePoll CTL call. The first parameter epft is the file descriptor of the ePoll instance. The third parameter fd is the file descriptor for which you wish to do the control operation. The second parameter op specifies the control operation to be done. It can be epoll ctl add, which means fd is to be added to the set of file descriptors monitored by the epoll instance epft. The events to be monitored are given in the location pointed by the last parameter event. op can be epoll ctl mod, which means the events being monitored for the file descriptor FT are to be changed to those pointed by the last parameter event. And finally, OP can be epoll ctl del, which means that the file descriptor FD is to be deleted from the set of file descriptors associated with the epoll instance epft. In this case, the fourth parameter events is ignored. The fourth parameter appointed to struct epoll event specifies the events to be monitored for the file descriptor FT. 
struct epoll event contains an unsigned 32 bit integer events which is a bit mask made by oring zero or more events the possible events are epoll in file descriptor is available for read epoll out file descriptor is available for write epoll rd hub stream socket pairs close connection epoll pri exception condition on file descriptor epoll err error condition on file descriptor epoll hub hang up on file descriptor epoll et set edge triggered behavior for file descriptor the default behavior is level triggered which is intuitive however there are certain use cases where edge triggered is useful epoll one shot set one shot behavior for file descriptor file descriptor is disabled after one event epoll wake up ensure that system does not enter suspend or hibernate when this event is pending or is being processed epoll exclusive sets up exclusive mode of wake up for epoll file descriptor to which this file descriptor is being attached useful for avoiding thundering heart problem in certain scenarios epoll wait waits and returns when at least one event has occurred on the epoll instance identified by file descriptor epoll ft or the timeout has occurred the timeout is in milliseconds a maximum max events are returned max events must be greater than 0 an array of max event struct epoll event must be provided as the second parameter epoll p wait is just like epoll wait except that it is a fifth parameter a signal mask this signal mask is made the signal mask of the thread at the beginning of the epoll wait call before epoll wait returns the original mask is restored so epoll wait makes it possible to change the signal action for some signals for the duration of the epoll wait call and now we have an example program using the epoll api for monitoring sockets this is the modified flight time server using the epoll api instead of poll everything except socket monitoring is the same as before the server starts and sets up a listener socket and then using epoll create one it creates an epoll instance and it adds up the listener socket to the epoll instance the loop starts the server does epoll wait our timeout is infinite so minus 1 is passed as the timeout when the wait is over epoll wait returns number of file descriptors in nfds and the events in the array ep event so we go through the ep event array if the socket is a listener it is a request for new connection the request is accepted and the new socket is added to the set of file descriptors monitored by the epoll instance eft if the socket is not listener then it is communication from an existing client we go ahead and receive the message using the rec we call if the number of bytes received is zero the client has closed the connection we delete the socket fd from the set monitored by the epoll instance and close the socket file descriptor and if number of bytes received is more than zero we process the message from the client and do the needful epoll versus poll select how does epoll compare with the poll and select system calls in case of select and also poll all the data like the file descriptors and events goes to the kernel with the system call and also a lot of data comes back to the process from the kernel so there is a lot of data flow between the user space and the kernel and vice versa in case of select it is difficult to process the file descriptor sets because no matter how many file descriptors are there one has to check for each file descriptor 0 to fd max select is also complicated because it overrides the file descriptor sets so one has to reinitialize them for the next iteration epoll is different because it creates a data structure and epoll instance in the kernel you can always add delete or modify the file descriptors attached to the epoll instance epoll wait the call made for each iteration gives the array of structures with the array size each element of the array is a structure containing the file descriptor and the events that happened on that file descriptor so data flow between the process and kernel is much less for each iteration also epoll wait gives data in a format that can be easily processed by the server program so epoll api is much better and faster than poll and select calls and we come to the end of this video you can find all this information at https colon double slash tinyurl dot com slash iomux one. 
Thanks very much for watching. Take care and stay safe.